got everybody in that is to come in. I, we are all in and it's being recorded now per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. You're on. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 8, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, a public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, we each, each ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you're proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions you may have. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own opinions. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required per permits, such as zoning, inlands and wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read our legal notice. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, legal notice, Tana Weathersfield Historic District Commission. Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, September 8th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application 5048-20, Earthlight Technologies, seeking to install roof-mounted PV solar panel system with 36 panels on south and east facing roofs of home and garage at 360 Main Street. Application 5049-20, Erickson Wassel, seeking to construct a 10 by 13 first floor addition on rear of home with an attached porch using using shingle siding, ace Zach trim, and wood stairs at 19 Willard Street. Application 5050-20, Bridget Kennedy, seeking to install a 14 by 28 garden cape style clotter farms, one car garage with T111 Duratemp wood siding and transom windows above door at 285 Garden Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836. 2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 24th day of August 2020. Thank you, Chris. For the record, we have tonight with us uh, full commissioners Chris Lyons, Mark Raymond, Doug Ovian, Claire Mead, and myself, Jennifer Wolf. Uh, also, alternate Kathleen Williams. Absent today is alternate Vasek Miglis. With that, I will call the first application, 5048 20, the application for 360 Main Street. Do we have someone present on that application? Yes. Hello, this is Ian Buckles from Earthlight Technologies. Hi there. Do you have the homeowner with you too, or are you presenting by yourself? Uh, by myself, correct. Okay. And they, to your knowledge, they weren't planning on calling in? Yes. He said he wouldn't be able to make it. Okay. All right. So tell us about your project. So we're proposing 36 uh, sun power, 327 watt solar panels to be roof mounted at 360 Main Street for the customer Thomas Ray. Um, 36 panels across three different roofs. Uh, all facing away from the street. Um, 
and they will be, uh, it's all composite shingle uh, roof mounted. So I think we've all had the opportunity to look at um, the material that came in with the application, which was very complete, uh, and we appreciate that. We have um, some examples of what the product is. I assume all these pictures are your product there. Each panel is then divided into multi little squares that are That's visible from the naked eye from the street. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. And then um, the proposed panels, you also drew them out on the roof for us. And for the record, um, it's well into the application, but there's a sky view of the roof. And those areas that are labeled one and two represent the actual panels, correct? That's correct. I, I don't know how you like to do this. I can also share my screen so everyone can see sure. those images. Yep, that'd be great. That'll, we have um, black and white if we've printed them out. And so if you've got better pictures, that'd be excellent. Let me know if that worked. Yep. Yep. Perfect. So um, starting just with the panels, I went by today and I'm sure the other commissioners did too. I got out of my car and walked around. We're concerned with what can be seen from the public way or the public view. So in this case, the vast majority of the panels cannot be seen by any from any side streets or any other public view. They can't be seen from the sidewalk. We, with the exception of that exposure that faces south. And those in fact can be seen both from the road and from the sidewalk um, driving by or walking by. And the, um, they're a little bit shaded right now, um, a little bit blocked right now by some greenery but those leaves will be down soon and then they'll be very much visible. Um, so we're a little bit concerned about those. Uh, at least this commissioner is a little concerned about those and of course everyone will weigh in after I do. Um, I'm wondering if those, it looks like seven panels out of the 36 are crucial to the makeup of this project. Yeah, I mean, the customer would actually like to have more panels um, on his roof, but the, if you can see this middle uh, section between the garage, <clears throat> excuse me, and that south roof um, actually failed our engineering test and it's bolted, so there's no possibility for reinforcement. Um, so we can't do anything here. Um, and uh, just adding more panels to this shed dormer of the garage roof is not really an option due to shading reasons. Um, so I mean, actually, we, we do have the salesperson, Shamay, is on, I believe, on the call. Um, she could, might be able to speak to the customer's uh, intentions along that a little bit better than I could. I neglected but, to have you identify yourself with your business address. Could you do that for the record for me? Ian? Sure. This is Ian Buckles, Earthlight Technologies, 92 West Road, Ellington, Connecticut. And then if the salesperson is on the call, if they could identify themselves too, if they'd like to participate. Hi, this is Shamay Mejias, also with Earthlight Technologies at 92 West Road in Ellington. Uh, yeah, so um, Tom unfortunately could not make it tonight. Um, I believe that it might have something to do with kids going back to school, but um, yeah, he recently got in touch and wanted to know um, if there's any way that we could add additional panels uh, to his house because they recently um, installed a pool and their electricity bill is actually going to be increasing because of that. Um, so they were wondering if they would be able to put any uh, additional panels anywhere else. Ian kind of mentioned um, from an engineering standpoint, uh, this roof line here that's below their garage would not be available. Um, the only other place that we would uh, look at putting additional solar panels was on the front of the roof, um, but in our communications with uh, the Historic District Commission, it sounded like um, it would be more likely to be approved if we avoided uh, putting panels on the front of the roof. So we we're trying to be mindful um, of you know preserving the historical character of the home and the design. Um, I don't know if that helps to. It does. Um, I think probably some other commissioners have some other comments or questions for you. 
You know, I, I have a question and it's, it's just a solar panel question in general. I certainly see um, ground mounted panels, you know, arrays in a yard or a field. Mm -hmm. Do they work the same way roofs do? Yeah, exa exactly the same, except uh, in those situations, we would be creating a false roof that the panels sit on. Um, they use the same racking and uh, same panel types, um, which is just a little bit more light work, usually with uh, planning and zoning, because we have to trench uh, the electric back to the house. It always has to go back to the main service yeah. panel, yeah, yeah. basically. But uh, yeah, other than we can uh, situate the ground mount exactly where we want it and have it, you know, facing uh, due south for optimal exposure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it just occurred to me they, um, I was out over the long weekend and saw some, a lot of those out. And um, this is a very, very deep yard. I thought this yeah. was clear. Yeah, I actually believe we started the conversation with Tom um, looking at the ground array. And uh, if I recall correctly, um, it looked like the yard, um, just based on the trees that are around it, would not have um, a ton of solar exposure. So he would need a lot more panels to get the same production as we're able to get off of the roofs that he has laid out here. Um, so the, the project was cost prohibitive at that point, um, looking at the ground array. Can you tell us about, oh, oh, go ahead, Claire. No, no, you go ahead, Jen. I was going to move on to the mechanical mechanical portion of it, but I don't want to jump ahead if you've got another no, question. No, no, please do. Okay, so the other question I had looking at um, the other numbered items is uh, whether anything rises over the roofs, over the roofs, or if all of the mechanicals are internal with the exception of the boxes. Yeah, so all of our solar equipment will basically be mounted in the basement with the exception of the AC disconnect switch, which needs to be on the exterior uh, within 10 feet of the utility meter. Here we have it a little farther away, but per code, as long as there is a placard indicating where it is, then that is fine. It's actually tucked around the corner, um, so you wouldn't be able to see it. It'd be a little less, uh, a little more inconspicuous around this corner here. Um, that's the only part that needs to be on the outside. That's a, um, that's a knife blade disconnect uh, per code for uh, Eversource. Um, and then those other items, three, five, and six, those are all interior mounts and there won't be anything visible from the outside. So three, yeah, three is the main service panel, five is the existing utility meter, correct. Uh, six is our equipment, which will be in the basement. Um, all our conduit is gonna be run on the inside with the exception of getting these panels over to these. So there will be a piece of pipe that runs um, just along, if you can see my cursor, just along this roof, this middle roof, just to connect these two right here. Um, because like I said, this is vaulted, so there's no access, um, there's no attic access. So that's how we would connect these and then everything would be run on the interior. Okay. And so, and so once you bring that um, one pipe over across that roof ridge that you're indicating right now, after that, the panels would be connected from the inside. It's just the makeup of that particular roof that doesn't allow for it to be on the interior. Correct. Okay. Correct. If we could, yeah, if the, I mean, ideally, ideally we can get panels on here, but if there was attic access, we would just run everything through the attics, uh, that's the way we like to do it, and the panels would look like they were floating on there, which yeah, is that's, that's well. Great. That's great. And you don't have a panel um, that has an option for just a flat black map finish without all the dots and lines on it. Uh, we do have we do have those options. Um, I don't think the customer went for them. There's uh, pricing issues and and such that are a little out of my wheelhouse, but. Okay. Uh, we, do, we do have those options. Okay. Is there anything that you think I missed that I should be asking about, Ian? Uh, I'll just show you a few things real quick. Um, this is just a cut sheet for uh, our racking system. Um, as you can see, um, all the racking, as long as, as long as the mid clamps, the end clamps, all the rail is anodized black. 
which is really nice. It blends in with the roof and the panels, so you don't see a lot of that um, uh, silvery uh, racking underneath the panels, um, as well as our um, the L feet that attach to the roof, all anodized black. So it's a it's actually a really good system. <laughs> Um, any, anything else either of you would like to add to your application tonight or you think you've covered everything? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that would, that would do it for me. Do any of the commissioners have any additional questions on this application? Yes, Jen, if I could ask uh, on that exposure that you can see from the street, the, the seven panels, and you did mention that to lose the the framing or that checkerboard style that we can see in, in the previous jobs and what's been proposed here. And I know you just mentioned cost. Uh, is there any chance that those panels could be in the lose of that silver or that kind of aluminum metallic checkerboard pattern? Yeah, unfortunately we can't mix and match panels like that. It would have to be all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is Claire. I don't know how to articulate this area that I'm interested in. Um, it's really helpful to have your screen shared, so thank you for that. You have a small front-facing roof that's numbered seven. If we go back, yep. yep. So go back to the next, go to your right, uh, to the next seven. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> this one right here. Yeah, and then look at the, look, the roof that's right there to the right of that second seven. Did you all evaluate that? So that that is part of the like that is part of the vaulted uh, ceiling. Okay, so that flunked as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because I I just was looking and thinking that maybe it was tucked back enough that it would not be as visible. So okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. No, sure. Anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public wish wishing to speak in favor or against this application? I ask one more question. I'm sorry, Jen. Sure. How critical is, I mean, obviously it's, the panels are needed to with the desired uh, generation. What happens if those panels are not appropriate for that exposure, those seven? In other words, if, if uh, if the commission deemed to, they would need to be removed and just uh, the other panels remain? Correct. Um, yeah, I would have to defer maybe to Shamay. She, you know, is more customer facing than, than I am on project management. Well, I, excuse me, but I think what Chris is asking, Chris, and make sure I'm right here, is from a technical perspective, would that cause, could the project go forward without those seven panels? Correct, would it produce the- Yeah, okay. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, tech, technically it could. We would have to we would have to alter our uh, application for EverSource and the Connecticut Green Bank. There's a, a bunch of paperwork that would need to be uh, redone. But uh, yeah, nothing is impossible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the only um, impact. So if we were to remove those panels, um, what would happen is it would just drop the production of the entire system. Um, so. You know, Tom is looking to offset as much of his electricity bill as possible, you know, especially given the recent um, electricity rate increases that we've seen, you know, we're seeing a lot of homeowners looking to um, really just, you know, take those electricity costs and bring them to a manageable level. Um, so just, you know, mean that he'd be buying more electricity from Eversource and um, his electricity bill is going up already because of the pool. So he was looking to get more power. Um, so I think he's hoping, you know, to get as much power as his system can produce given the roof space that he has available and, um, you know, maintaining the character of, of the home by not putting him on the front of the house. Thank you. Thank you. I have a brief question, Jen. Yes. Um, for the uh, either representative, uh, this is Doug Ovian, and I'm curious about the area to the east. It looks almost like a backdoor uh, porch 
covering right there. Uh, thank you. Is there, uh, is that an area that's suitable for any panels? No, it's not, it's not something we even, I don't think investigated initially. Um, because of the shading reasons, this main roof will basically uh, shade that whatever panels you're gonna put here, especially these like very close to the gable end. Sure, um, I mean, you can was, see the problem. Yeah, so at that point it, become, it becomes a, it becomes a game of, you know, uh, how much you're gonna pay for a panel versus how much it's gonna produce. And then that, that payback period is, is, you know, if it's stretched out for so long and it's just not worth it at that point. It, I mean, realistically, you could probably get one panel here and even that wouldn't produce that much. Would uh, there be room for four panels where it says four below the seven uh, immediately to your left? Uh, or is that not a roof? Um, that is a roof. It looks like a rubber membrane. Um, yeah, that I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know that we'd be able to fit four there. We could probably turn the panels, um, you know, to go in an alternate uh, direction and probably fit maybe three panels there. Um, and you and can you install these on a flat roof? Yes, but um, it's actually not as cheap as installing it on composite shingle. Um, there are some special attachments that we need to uh, install to make sure that there's, there's no leaking. Um, those are actually quite expensive, so it would be an adder uh, to the customer. Understand. Thank you very much. I do appreciate the additional uh, conversation about those two areas. Absolutely. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other um, questions from the commissioners or members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Um, Jen, I just wanted to add during the public portion that I could not be happier to, than to see the anodized uh, accessories that are available. Um, that's a, a real uh, essential part of, I think, any installation in the district. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hearing nothing further, we'll move to the next application, 5049-20, the application for 19 Willard Street. Is the application, applicant with us? Yeah, he's, it's, uh, he's muted. Oh. Eric Wassel. Great. Welcome, sir. Do you have a contract or two or just you tonight? Hi there, everyone. This is uh, Eric from Wassel. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. And I'm oh, Mike McDonald. Great. I'm Eric's uh, architect. Ah, great. Okay, tell us about your project. Sure. So before I hand it over to, uh, to Mike to provide some further details um, on tonight's project, um, I figured I'd give some high-level context um, for today's application. Um, so my wife and I have been in the home for almost two years now. Um, and are actually expecting our first child um, come February. So really the sole purpose of tonight's application um, to add an addition to the back of our home is, is really to just improve our, our daily way of living um, and, and to take care of any potential safety concerns. So for us specifically, that means having some additional space for a, a laundry room and bathroom on the first floor. Um, currently, our one bathroom is on the second floor and laundry is in the basement, so in order to access it, we have to go down some uh, treacherous stairs, which of course becomes a little bit more problematic with a little one on the way. So, um, and then lastly, from an overly cautious perspective, um, taking off the existing asbestos siding is something that we've really wanted to take care of sooner rather than later. Um, and given, you know, that we'll need to replace the siding on the back of the home in order to undertake this project, um, we figured we should take this opportunity to, to kind of take care of it all. Um, so with that said, um, in that context, I'll turn it over to Mike um, to go over some of the finer details. Thanks, Eric. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. So the yeah. view from the um, front of the house, uh, we're going to do a shed dormer uh, or shed roofed addition to the rear. So I've just roughed it in 
in a cartoon fashion, we'll move to the drawings, but just to give you a sense of um, what you'll be able to see from the road will be basically the side, um, and that would be the west side. Um, as we go around the corner towards the back of the house, we're standing in a common driveway. Again, I just cartooned in the rough outline. This also gives you a look at the porch we want to take off, which is an, a lean-to addition. It's an un unconditioned, just open area of inferior construction, so we're anxious to get that out. Um, that shed addition, though, does lead to the kitchen, so when we get to our design, you'll see we're adding a set of stairs uh, that'll maintain uh, egress from that um, point in the kitchen. So then from the straight back view, again, to the right northwest, uh, the addition we want to remove, and then generally where we're going to apply the new addition. And we'll be cutting a doorway in just to the right of that dining room window, and in the plan, that's how you'll be entering the house. Um, so again, we roughed in um, just in cartoon fashion for you on your assessor map on the GIS. The blue mass is the porch we're removing and the green mass is the porch we're adding. And then we go to the drawings. Um, so, Hi, Mike. I think you're, we're, we're stuck, or at least I am. I, I'm still stuck on the, um, the PowerPoint slides. Yeah. We're on the back of the house still. All right, I'm going to close that. How about that? There you yep. go. All right, so the, the front of the house faces generally north, so that's what we're calling the, the front of the house is north, the back um, is we're calling south, even though it's angled. So this will be the west side. This is that um, view of the addition that we saw from the road since it's flush up to the um, existing side of the house. As you go around to the back of the house, then you'll see the addition we're mimicking the open rafter tails of the original house design. There's a slight sculpted cut on the end of those. Um, the uh, main floor is up off the ground about four and a half feet. So we need um, a porch entrance to get up into that. There's, um, and then the other, the old kitchen door, once we remove the old lean-to porch, we'll have a set of stairs that lead directly into the kitchen. There are solar panels on the roof, so I've illustrated those and the whole conduit system that runs down just so when we get to construction, we remember uh, to deal with those. Uh, if I can zoom in. So that's our plan of the addition. You come up the steps from that west side, come in a fiberglass door with half glass. You'll be in a mudroom hallway with some cabinets and a bench to your right to the left, the pocket door into the half bath and the laundry area. And blocking the dining room window and opening up a, a door into the house. And then from the opposite side, from the east, you'll see that new set of stairs, a bracketed roof that will take you into that kitchen uh, old kitchen entranceway, and then you'll see the opposite side of the addition. Uh, the windows that we're adding are the same size and Munton pattern as the existing house, which are 12 over ones below. So uh, each side of that addition had a window to uh, mimic that. So our plan, since we're taking all the siding off, all the transite, is to do a Cedar Impressions vinyl shake shingle. Uh, trimming the windows with an AZEC board, a one by four stock. Uh, the roof shingles will be the asphalt to match. The stairs are wood construction. And there will be the exposed side of the house foundation would just continue with the new found foundation finish. I again neglected to have you identify yourself and your business address for the record, if you could do that for me. Sure, my name is Michael McDonald. Uh, my company is Macintosh Design and I'm in Clinton, Connecticut. Thank you, I apologize. That's okay. So I, in the original material, I don't think we had that you were gonna be taking all the siding off the body of the house. 
Joe, I'll tell you how we got there. The pink area on the back is the minimum amount of asbestos siding to remove to make the project buildable. Uh, our, our construction contractor is Doug Losella from DBL Contracting. Um, he's priced up um, this amount of siding, basically the rear of the house, and leaving all the rest of the surround site in place. And he's given Eric a price to take all the asbestos siding off. So um, it's a differential that's worth um, the family pursuing the full removal. So in my original application, I, I said that we would build the addition of, out of wood cedar shingles to course out matching the pattern of the old transite on the presumption that we only worked in the rear of the house. But it does, um, as of our discussion with Doug this week, um, the family would like to go ahead and remove all the siding, which opens the opportunity for a comprehensive siding solution. So that's the plan, and I think that's it's smart, obviously, for them to take care of the problem at one time with the measures that have to be set up for that removal and cleanup. We've used the cedar impressions um, with some great success in the district. Um, can you flip to your pictures of the house again, the front of the house for us? Did that come up? No. No, oh, but it sounded like a jet engine. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, it it seems work. like the, it can only take so many platforms at a time. Is the, um, is any of the side, I mean, I've, I drove by this house, obviously, as well as I'm sure we all did. And it looks like it's in good shape, though. Is it in bad shape, or is it just because you're doing the back of the house? Um, the siding is fine and transite lasts forever if it's left to its own. It is very brittle and, and if, if anyone damages it, it breaks off. So no, there, there's no condition issues. It's just the fact that, uh, and I think you know, it's an inert form of asbestos. Sure. Um, it's not you, have to, you have to grind it up in little pieces and sn 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 snort it up your nose to have a problem. But um, it's more a liability, I think, in the waiting that the next homeowner would maybe be hesitant to buy the house if they weren't as um, confident about the nature of the material. So here, here's my concern about the front of the house, if you can flip to that picture, is that you've got these um, columns on the front porch that are not square. They taper as they go up. Um, and so it's going to be hard to use a very rectangle plastic product on those columns. How do you propose to deal with that? Uh, Doug is going to mock this up for us. If there's a problem making this, the vinyl product work, I think we could do limited wood shingles um, in that location. And then just be a small amount of painting to maintain. And Did I ask? I'm, Jen, I'm sorry. On yeah. that same, on that same vein, while we're there, uh, have you considered? Because I share with Jen this concern about one of the main features of the house being so difficult to replicate. Uh, have you thought of using cedar around the whole house? Um, I, according to Doug's pricing, it's about the same cost for the wood with the added burden of future maintenance and repainting. So um, that's, I think, what led Eric, and you could chime in, I think um, we felt the, the vinyl would be the best choice long-term. The vinyl Yeah, that, is, that was. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, apologies. I was just gonna um, confirm um, Mike's assessment there. It's just really vinyl was, was more of a, a personal preference and uh, obviously, as new um, homeowners, um, we were just under the impression that from a, a durability perspective and long-term maintenance perspective, um, vinyl would just be the better option and then throw in, you know, the, the cost um, assessment that we got from Doug. And that's that's kind of where, how we got to where we are um, today. So 
Yeah, I'm a little concerned about that because I think that if you're concerned about uh, resale, uh, the over the life of the product, uh, your wood shingles would normally be thought of as a longer lasting product than the vinyl uh, replication. And so if you're in it for the short term, uh, you gain the benefit of an easier uh, installation on this house, uh, not having to match plastic and wood in the same plane. Um, and, and you're also getting a product that uh, normally has close closer to a hundred year life rather than the shorter life that uh, uh, plastic siding normally uh, carries with it. Just something to think about. Okay, thank, thank you very much thank for you. that perspective. And yeah, we'll absolutely take that into account. Appreciate it. You know, like I said, uh, it depends on the conversations you're having with your contractor. He's knowledgeable, uh, but it really depends on where in the 100 year life cycle or 50 year life cycle or 25 year life cycle you're talking. Uh, wherever you might be in those, you could come out with a different result. Thank you. And if you, um, the original proposal, if you were to keep the main body of the house, what were you proposing for the addition specifically? Um, a Western red cedar shake shingle with the stepped uh, detailing. If you, I can't really zoom in probably, but the coursing of the house, every other shingle is a half inch offset. So we were going to um, replicate the coursing lines of the existing transite and the shingle pattern. Um, with, with wood instead. With the wood, yeah. Yeah. And Again, then, that would be such a limited area that the, and it's mostly first story. So the painting chores in the future would be easily tackled. Sure. Um, and then the trim on the front of the house over the door and the front porch, all of that would remain the same. Yes, there's no intent to change out the rakes and fascias that are wood now, um, or to clad them, we'll just leave them as wood. And then I think um, in the future, if there's a problem, we could come forward, because we, we do like to work with AZEC, but um, in this case, we'd, we'd retrim each window surround in the AZEC, but we'd leave the other wood trim in place. And um, the same goes for under the porch. That would all stay, yeah. The lattice work. Yeah. Mike, is that going to extend to the new stairs, both the kitchen replacement one and the new access to the, the Thank addition? you, Chris. I had that same question. Yeah, I think I have to shift again to the new application. So right now I'm open underneath. Um, right. see and the, the thinking behind having that all open is are you getting the drawing there yep. yes okay it doesn't well, really show the kitchen one but um you can see it in the other side yeah yeah the kitchen one is right there yep and and why are they left open um, I hadn't given it that much thought. Um, I didn't have any re specific requests for a place to tuck the lawnmower, et cetera, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's it, just going to be full of leaves, but I'm yep. just, I mean, we're happy that's to not, That's not our concern. I was just curious. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I mean, it's a very valid point. Um, yeah, I really hadn't put much thought into, you know, closing that off versus keeping it open. Um, I do currently use the existing lean to that we'll, we'll be taking down for for storage of you know lawnmower and other um other things that aren't necessarily fitting in my basement currently um so that was really the main thought but again you know happy to, to consider alternative options as well so this is a poor replication of a very ornate uh, lattice work but we would if we go forward to enclose we'd look to do something similar 
And you could put a door in as well. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. what I was thinking. Just yeah, frame you know, once you close it, you got to have access or else the skunk family will right. take right. up residence. Now, the cedar impressions, I don't believe a color was talked about. Did you identify a color? Maybe I missed that. Uh, white is the preference for the for Eric and his wife. Okay. Um, the AZAC trim would be white as well? Or? It comes in white, but I right. uh, we just started talking about maybe a color. So um, I guess if we could come back at a subsequent yeah. meeting and talk about color schemes. That's a great idea. That would be sure. If we were um, inclined to approve the cedar impressions, would all the corners be mitered, no corner boards? Um, I'm not that familiar with the product as Doug is. Um, I know I have a vinyl shake shingle and there's a stepped shake shingle corner. And, and I've talked to Eric today about the corners and all the trim should be the matching color. So from any distance, the, the shingle effect is, is provided. Uh, and I would contrast that. There's a house across the street, I think number 22. It's a blue cedar impressions, but they use a white corner board everywhere. And, and I absolutely abhor that kind of outlining of the house. Um, reminds me of a, a little kid's drawing of their house. So um, all the trim at the siding would be the same color, in this case, white. So you don't distinguish the plastic as easily. You know, the neighbor's probably watching this, this video, but that's <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. he, doesn't have, he doesn't have to live there. He's <laughs> yes. a contractor. It's not going to be a referral. <laughs> I apologize profusely, but it's just not my, not my aesthetic. <laughs> That's funny. If vinyl corners could weave like wood wood shingles, that would be the ideal thing, but I don't think they have that yet. Understood. No, yeah. the Cedar Impressions does have a corner piece that does a decent job looking like mm -hmm. a corner piece. In white, it would be um, even more difficult probably to discern that it wasn't on the same plane because it does rise up a little bit in order to hook in. Sure. Um, but it's, it's not fatal. It's not a fatal problem. No. Um, you know, I think we have uh, quite a few unanswered questions. Um, I, I do see that you've specced out what the material is for the back steps, the decking. Can you tell us about the railing system? What is that made out of? So the product I typically use the top rail is fiberglass and has a profile like an interior wood handrail. Uh, there's caps at the posts. The posts are typically white vinyl wrapped around a pressure treated post. But, and then the pickets are just square vinyl pickets and they fit into the bottom vinyl rail. So that's the vinyl and fiberglass system. Is there um, a maker for that? Sometimes we like to see it because the uh, we know that over time, over the last couple of years, the AZEC products have changed and there's some other products mm -hmm. that do a better job. I think it's not, we don't have a high visibility line for those, um, but it, I think where we're probably heading at the moment is coming back for another meeting, if I'm reading everybody correctly. And so that might be something we would wanna see cut sheets for that product and maybe a, or, sample, if you, yeah, a sample if you could get it for us too. Sure. Easier and then I think having another opportunity um, now that I understand that there's this uh, additional stairway that I think might be more bit more visible. I think the one from the addition part, you're only gonna get a glancing view of it, but you might get a better view of that other stairway. Um, this is kind of hard to see. To, this uh, is where that addition is now because the houses are close together. Right. Uh, so it's a little and, hard. And, and, and just to add an, an additional detail, uh, this is Eric from Wassel. Um, we do have an existing six foot stockade um, fence um, from on, on that exact side. So therefore obviously making it a little bit harder to, to see that, that one staircase up to the kitchen. Is that um, stockade fence remaining? Or are you planning on taking that down? That it is okay. remaining. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just sort of for general information, things like stockade fences right now may be blocking um, a view, but we have to make decisions based on the next homeowner taking that fence out and it's visible. So 
just FYI. Are there any other details that we have not asked you about or any additional information you'd like to share with us? How about window manufacturer? I, I don't believe we heard that unless again, I missed it. Well, all, are all of the windows, will there be one window that we could see? They're Harvey. The driveway, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so I just checked, the, I had a box of that railing uh, material in my wood shop. Uh, it's Fiber Rail is the company. Um, and I, that comes from Sanford Hawley. Um, I know Doug Lacella likes to use Harvey for most of his stuff. So I'm sure they have a similar product. Um, I could grab a piece of the railing too, but it's, it's a very nice profile, the top cap rail. What we're usually concerned about is a, um, a plasticky sheen look on the white portions of those railings in the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the vinyl is, uh, pickets are, are matte finished. The rail, the fiberglass rail does have a factory white paint on it. It's got a semi-gloss maybe. Yeah, I think I probably want to see a sample of what's being proposed. Do any commissioners have the, additional questions? Yeah, Mike, I'm sorry, you may have stepped away for the railing, but I, I don't know if it was identified. The window we can see on the new addition that's on the driveway side there. Did you mention now uh, the type, obviously it's a 12 over one or, or none that you mentioned, but I don't well, believe- it's Harvey, we, but what, which part, which line of Harvey, please? I can't tell you that Doug is, is probably going to make a suggestion for us. Okay. Great. If we could have a, a cut sheet for the window and then for that uh, rail system that you uh, described, it sounded promising, at least in terms of the matte finish of parts of it. The only other thing I wanted to add while we still had the homeowner, I'm sorry, the homeowner and the architect here was that you might also want to consider that this may not be the last edition this house experiences. And just as now you are dealing with the idea that you might have to re-skin the entire home for the sake of consistency, depending on what's available, if you were to do uh, wood shingles now, any other edition would be readily uh, mixable with the siding that's already in place in the future, whereas um, some time from now, it's hard to say that your uh, siding, uh, even if available, would match uh, because of the fading properties over time. So again, when it comes to versatility, it's hard to beat uh, wood cedar shingles, um, especially at the same price. If the only difference is paint, uh, you could already always stain them and uh, staining uh, may reduce your uh, long-term expenditure on the building as well. So just some thoughts to consider as you're talking about uh, additional uh, cut sheets and uh, materials that you're hoping to use. Thank you. Jennifer, it's Kim. Um, in the original application packet, there should have been um, a skinned um, information cut sheet um, for the Harvey Majesty. Um, Thank you. It was in. It was in with the zip file, so it might have gotten zipped away. I don't know what happened to it, but there, it was in there. I have a sheet that says Harvey, but it doesn't say Harvey Majesty. So yeah, we were missing some of the pages for some reason. So I don't. Yeah. Know. That's exactly right. It says Harvey, but it doesn't spell it out. It just says yeah. Thank you. So we would need those, um, a little bit more information on that. Great. Well, thank you very much. I think um, if no one else has anything additional to add. Well, actually, Jennifer, I just had one question. Sure. I was I was wondering if I'm reading this correctly, there are two back doors and two stairwells in the back of that house. That's correct. Okay. The, um, There's a door into the kitchen, and then there'll be a door into the um, laundry room, and by passing, there's a bathroom on the other side. Is that right? 
That's correct. The addition, the existing porch we're removing is right here. Uh -huh. you, you come in from the side and you turn through the kitchen. So once we take that off, we need to uh, achieve the floor level so that there's the small set of stairs and that little roof covering. Uh -huh. And then the, new, the entire new addition is going to be cutting in through the wall next to the window we're filling in into the dining room. So, so the homeowner wants two sets of stairs to the back of the house? Um, yes, the, the car driveway park area is off to the side mm -hmm. to the left here. So day-to-day -day use would be in through right. the mudroom. Uh, but then when the family's in the home, they, they can let the dog out or take their new baby to the backyard. They'll probably use the kitchen more frequently. And was there something that showed the door, the new door they were putting in, or are they putting in two new doors? Nope. Um, the existing kitchen door will stay. And we've got the top half of the new door. Yeah. So it's, a, it's half glass, also has uh, muntins in it. So I've just colored the part that's above the railing. So that would be the new door. The existing door, I don't even know what it is uh, right now. It's probably painted oak or something. So that door would just get a refinished job. Okay. We can't see that anyway. So um, yes, that's up to you. Right. Okay. Yep. Thank those, you. Those doors aren't visible from anywhere. Yeah. Um, but the intent is to, because there's no windows in the rear to have half glass in that door just for security coming and going. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay, if no one else has anything else, uh, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to our last application, 5050, uh, the application at 285 Garden. Hey, good evening. Richard Kennedy here. Hello. Hi. So tell us about your project. Can you identify yourself, uh, name and address? Yes, Bridget Kennedy. Um, I reside at 285 Garden Street. Great. And do you have someone with you or are you doing the presentation yourself tonight? <laughs> well, I have my husband, but I don't have, I don't have um, a, a contractor. Yeah. That's great. Tell us what you've got for us tonight. Um, well, we'd like, to, um, we'd like to put a one car garage in the back of our property. Um, our, we're on a corner. Um, Fernwood and Garden is where our house is lo located and there is no garage right now. So um, we'd, we'd like to put a 14 by 28 foot uh, one car garage um, in the back of the property and the, um, the, drive, the driveway or the approach to it is off of Fernwood. Uh, it will be very I'm sorry. You have to take down a very big tree to put it in. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, that's step number one, and we're waiting for um, Bruce Graver to, uh, uh, you know, squeeze us into his schedule. Um, oh, good. Yeah. So we have a huge hemlock in the back that it has to go, and actually we have a a, a branch that's just hanging. Uh, I think it's called a widowmaker. And it's uh, since the last storm, um, you know, it's just been hanging. So we haven't been able to park our cars there either. The small structure that's there right now will be removed? Um, it'll be moved. It won't be removed. It'll be moved um, uh, to, uh, actually on this picture, it would be a right, right here behind the hedge. It would be like about right where that um, mock, orange. mock orange bush is. That's where the, sh the, the first step is get move, um, take down the tree and then they come to prepare the site and they're going to um, move the shed and prepare a smaller site for it right, right where this um, bush is. And when you're saying right where the bush is, not close to the road, but in the far corner of the property. Yes, it's right. It'll be behind. It'll it's behind this hedge. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about the new building itself. Uh, well, it's um, it's the T one eleven Duratemp wood siding, um, and it's um, it's going to have a 
The architectural shingles are gray, charcoal gray. Um, the hardware on the doors, I have, I have a picture. Um, I'm not really familiar with sharing a screen, but I guess I'm going to try to do is it that. The picture right that now. was in your, is it what you gave us in your application? Yes, but I have it. We in, have that picture. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There, there should be three uh, versions. One, one has measurements on it. And um, so, yeah, uh, there'll be um, a double door facing the street with transom um, windows in it. There are transom windows above in the gable, and there's transom windows on the other end, um, uh, exactly the same. Um, and then uh, there's a single door that faces the house. Um, and then there's more transom windows. Um, there's, it's a set of four on the, on the long sides. And so that would be facing the neighbor and facing the house. And it's all, I mean, colors, it's all red. Um, uh, I don't know what I'm, what else to add? Probably missing something. I think okay, you know most of it. Is the door gonna look like the door that you've drawn in? Uh, the door is uh, what you see in this 3D sketch. It's a double door, double wood door. Oh, I'm, I'm the, person, door. the person door facing your house. Oh yeah, that's a wooden door. Uh huh. With transom, with transom, with some windows in it. So as drawn in the picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Bridget, just so we can identify, are you going to any outdoor lighting? Are you going to put any fixtures front of the your? door on the side, the east side, or? We're not, we haven't thought about putting lighting in. Are you gonna uh, have electricity there? Or? Uh, eventually, I think we will put okay. electricity in, yeah. So currently, nothing proposed now. Oh, no, no, okay. not, not currently. That's fine, yep, thank you. And no, one of the um, pictures that you point to, although not your drawing, has a cupola on the top. You're not proposing that, oh, right? no. Okay. <laughs> No, I think that was, no, I, I, that page was about um, the door. The right. stand, we're getting a standard door. Yeah. It's very plain. The intent was to match the uh, character of the other uh, shed, which is also a fodder product. So the coloring and uh, the overall shape um, make it feel like a set structurally. Um, and there's no dissonance in the backyard from that. At least that's what we thought. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Do you have anything further for us? Uh, I think that's it. It's pretty, I hope it's pretty straightforward. We need a garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, you did a good job. The application had everything we needed in it. We appreciate that very much. Good. All right. Uh, do we have any questions from any uh, comments from the public in favor or against? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The public meeting application 5048 Earth Light Technologies. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the um, material used uh, be flat black uh, for the panels. Uh, I'll second for the sake of argument. Um, you know, Doug, we hadn't really talked about changing the product entirely with them. I know Chris had asked if they would consider using the flat black product without that grid visible on that section that we can see. Um, I don't know what sort of price differential that's going to bring them into. Of course, they can't, uh, Jen. It's either all or none. 
Supposedly. Right. I, he okay. can't do that section. He would have to do the whole project and yes. the other product. Um, I and, was. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Jen. The reason I made the motion the way I did is because I think we've seen enough uh, installations in the district to know that the flat black panels are substantially less noticeable than those with a pattern on them. And so I think that if we're going to have them in the district, uh, having the flat black is preferable. Um, if we're in a situation where it kind of drives the part that we can't see, uh, that's not a technical issue that we can really make a change on. But if we're going to answer the statutory requirement uh, here to stretch, uh, I think that having things like the anodized uh, um, supporting materials, uh, the relatively minimal amount of uh, panels that would be visible to the public way, create an opportunity here for uh, compromise with the homeowner uh, that helps to fulfill the intent of our regulatory statute while at the same time protecting the uh, district from irreparable harm. Uh, this is Claire. Um, I agree, Doug, that a compromise is in order. I think we, we are almost always compromising with solar um, when there's an application in front of us. Um, I'm less comfortable asking the homeowner to go to a more expensive product across the entire roof, as opposed to simply approving the two longer east facing roofs and not approving the seven panels on the south facing roof that's visible. Then they can come up with whatever sets of solutions they want. There's a possibility of adding at least two more panels on one of those roofs. Maybe look at the roof that you were talking about, the flat roof and get a couple there. I mean, I, th I think when you come down to it, we're looking at seven, seven grids that they would be losing. And that might, I don't know, the cost benefit might be better for them that way than taking all 36 to a more expensive product that they had already been proposed and had said no to, according I, to the wrap. I, I mean, I, I, it's hard to know. I, I, I see the point that you're making. And I think procedurally, proceeding the way that you're talking, uh, I think has uh, more merit perhaps than what I suggested. It's just that if they're dealing with a product that, uh, or, or uh, a, an installer that only, that advertises the wonderful underlayment that they're going to use, um, there's a benefit to the homeowner as well to being able to uh, have a good looking panel from the parts of the property that they'll be enjoying it from uh, in the back. So that's procedurally uh, a realization that might be better off for them to come to on their own. Uh, but uh, I could live with your uh, approval um, if uh, mine uh, is too adventurous. I think Doug- Adventurous with solar panels. <laughs> <laughs> I think I agree with Claire, Doug. Um, on this for the south panels, um, you know, we have put um, panels, it, this is a, a prominent street, obviously. It's, um, you know, it's an older home. We have panels in some very limited situations that are forward facing, but certainly not on an 1887 home on Main Street. And so I'm worried about having that, um, wag the dog for the rest of the street, frankly, when that would sur surely cause irreparable harm to the district to then be faced with other applications for even black flat panels along Main Street in houses dating back this far. Additionally, this roof is very steeply pitched, which makes that panel very, very visible as opposed to an application on some of the newer projects which had um, much less of a profile visible from the street or the sidewalk with a much lower pitched roof. Um, you know, I think that the installation is certainly less successful in that situation. I do agree with you 100% that the panels, 
as they've evolved are better looking when they don't have that grid system. It certainly uh, dissuades me from considering it on that south side. But again, if they don't mind it on the back of the house, we can't see it. And so that's, that's their choice for sure. So I don't know if it's your preference to hold your proposal and take it to a vote or if you'd prefer to withdraw it and I'll withdraw my second and uh, make a new motion. It's up to you. Thank you. I withdraw my motion in favor of a motion perhaps to be made by Claire with me as the second. Claire, would you be interested? Um, I'll make a motion to um, approve with the stipulation that the seven south facing panels not be included in the project. Those are not approved and the remaining uh, east facing panels are approved as submitted. I'll I will second that. I'm sorry. Sorry, Doug. That's okay, Mark. Uh, for so the again, sake of... You know, so again, to, to be clear, I think opening ourselves up on a home of this era in this location with a sharply peaked roof really would irreparably um, impair the character and appearance of this particular home and the district. Um, and for that reason, I think this is a good motion. I would agree with you on that uh, analysis uh, with the presented panels. Uh, thank you. And, and I'm surprised that we're talking about or, or touting the benefits of this anonymized uh, the REAC system that we, we've had presentations where you don't want to see the mounting brackets or the rails uh, visible at all. So I'm not quite sure um, you know, why we had even brought that piece up because we, we have had lower profile installations, let alone you know, the aluminized metallic grid pattern on these two. So I'm, I'm in favor. I, I was kind of surprised at how visible that, that self, what we're calling that self elevation. And, and we are confronted with, you know, who, what areas of homes, exposures, trees, can they support? And, you know, there are unfortunately adequate roof uh, surfaces here, but just unfortunately cannot because of the vaulted ceilings in this instance. Uh, and they have explored a lot of them. You know, this is a lot, a big application, 36 panels, one of the larger ones we've had. Yes. Uh, you know, and again, it is one of the larger homes, but I think, you know, every reason a prominent Main Street uh, location in, in our district that uh, may not be appropriate to that exposure on that slope of uh, that roof. Uh, 29 panels are still going to be installed. That's a lot of generation and maybe needed because of the exposures that's available to them. Uh, and I do appreciate them trying not to put them on the front exposures, which would make them more prominent. But that, that's a lot of panels, uh, even 29 panels. That's a lot of electricity. I don't think we've had one that big in the no, district yet. I think maybe that's not. the largest yet. Uh, anyone else? I would just say that I agree with you, Chris. And my com uh, compliments about the underlayment was only because um, even with um, depending on what the installation is, the idea is that you don't see that underlayment uh, because it's um, a neutral color. So, I know you're interested in all facets of solar and I appreciate you <laughs> pointing that out. <laughs> Thank you. I just didn't want you to think I'd lost my no. head. <laughs> Never. Thank you. Do we have any members of the public we wishing to speak in favor or against? No, no, not here. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Turning to application number 5049-20, the addition at 19 Willard Street. May I have a motion? I make a, a motion to the table. Sorry, I'll second. No, that's fine, Claire. I think that um, that's a great idea. We've got a lot of details we need. Um, maybe some more discussion about uh, leaving the back wood or in the alternative, showing us a mock-up of what those um, columns would look like in front. We need some more details on the back steps and what might come underneath them, some information on the windows and the rail systems. I'd like to see cut sheets for the window and um, cut sheets and, if, and samples of any proposed uh, railings for the back. Anyone else? Anything else that I'm missing? You know, I would appreciate since we're going to table it, 
I would really like to see samples of the cedar impression if they could get that for us. I know we've done them in the past, um, but I, I, I'm always concerned that the product has changed and we just go with the name. So since we're asking for samples, um, and I would love to see an actual sample of the railing system. I think again, cut sheets are great, but we talked about the sheen and the color and all that. So that would be really helpful too. Great. If the applicants could follow up with Kim, um, we'll arrange to have those uh, visible for all the members to look at. Uh, if no one else has anything to add, uh, all in favor of tabling, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table is passed. Uh, our final application, 5050-20, 285 Garden Street. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll okay. second. Uh, I, I think it's uh, Clotter Farm and, and they've made efforts to match that existing shed. It's certainly something we've approved in the past. Um, it, it's oriented in the right way. It, it's off the side of the home and um, it's gonna look good. Who took the second on that one? Uh, Mark, I think. Was it Mark? Mark, Mark and Claire, we both said it okay. at the same time, so flip a coin. It's definitely one of my favorite homes in all of Wethersfield, and it's a, an appropriate accessory building for it. Beautiful views of Standish Park. I'm happy to see a wood product back there, um, too. You know, it's a nice, the, obviously the clatter products are fantastic, so I think it's going to look very nice. Um, if no one else has anything further, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Moving on to the approval of minutes from August 25th. Uh, I think everyone was everyone, here. Everyone was here. Thanks, Linda. Any comments aside from our usual glowing review of our help from Linda and from Kim? Thank you, ladies. Can I have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Kim, do we have any other uh, business tonight, public comments? We do have public comment. Okay. If he's here, Michael Pareto's here. I am here, uh, Mike Pareto, 120 Hartford Avenue. Hi there. Good evening, Michael. How are, How are you? Good. So I know last time uh, we tried uh, applying for some change of the roof material. Um, coming really to continue the progress and make sure that we're not missing a beat by ordering materials for the next step. Um, was in time to submit for today's meeting, but looking, to, I guess, to get some comments on the idea of basically doing the wood shingles on the entire main structure except for the garage. Um, I know last time we were trying to basically get so the wood shingles were really, roof shingles are really just for the uh, street facing views. Um, but now I guess just want to make sure that we're okay ordering, kind of keep the progress moving to do the root, uh, wood shingles on the entire structure. I think if you were to come back with an amendment um, from my perspective for the entire house to be wood and just the garage in the backyard to have um, uh, asphalt shingles, I'd be gloriously happy with that. Okay. I would as well. <laughs> okay. Can I, Michael, can I just make sure I'm understanding it? Okay. So look, can we take it structure by structure? Yep. There's the original house, and that will be as it was wood. There's Correct. a two-story addition, and that's going to be wood. There's an L-shaped smaller addition, and that's going to be wood. And the detached garage that right now is just a foundation, that will be asphalt. Correct. Yeah, I think if you come back with an amendment, I don't, I don't yeah, think so. anyone that's here tonight is going to speak against that. Um, I, okay. I just want Mark, right? Am I correct? I don't want to speak for you. Yes, I would agree. Okay. My emotions are tempered, but I would be happy as well. <laughs> you don't think it would be glorious <laughs> like I do? <laughs> He's a little pickled tonight. 
So there, there are eight roofs. If you think about, you know, one and two, each side of a roof, there are eight sides. And so two of those will now be asphalt and six of those will be wood. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Send it in with Kim. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Okay. We bit the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> we it's like gonna, it. It's going to really be amazing. It's going to be so great. Yeah, it's going to be spectacular. Thank you. Excited about Thank you. Yeah. Thank you again as well for thinking about uh, our comments last time. Very no, appreciated. Absolutely. Absolutely, trying to make it work, you know, trying to find that right balance of everything. So uh, thank you for the, uh, for the feedback as well. Thanks so much for coming in again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Kim, do you have any report for us this evening? We might have more public comment. Um, maybe open it up. Let's see. I have, um, I have other people attached here, so I'm not totally sure, but we might have more public comment. Okay, sure. Anyone? Are there any other uh, members of the public who are watching the meeting that have any comments that they would like to make tonight? Kim, are they all unmuted so that they can? I have been. I'm hitting unmute, and they I uh, maybe are not unmuting themselves. So right. uh, I yeah. If there's anyone uh, watching and listening that wants to speak, you've been unmuted, but you would have to unmute yourself on your screen. Uh, if you drag your cursor to the lower left corner. I unmuted everyone at this point. So nobody's, nobody's on mute. Okay. So if you are on mute, that is all it's here. On your, it's on your own computer. Yeah. Okay. All right. If we have no other um, members of the public wishing to speak, do we have any correspondence? We do not. Great. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Um, anybody that has any questions can call Kim at the town hall tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Good night, y'all. Have, have a great night. Thank night. you all. Thank you, everyone. Take care.